the question says let g be the weighted connected undirected graph with distinct positive edge weights if every edge weight is increased by the same value then which of the following statements is or are true first is minimum spanning tree that is mst of g does not change and the statement q statement says shortest path between any pair of vertices does not change so let's take a short example or a, a small example of a graph that is weighted connected and undirected and let's find out if for a random graph both out of which uh, statements are true or either both are true neither of them are true or what is the scenario here okay so i'm taking a very simple graph say of three vertices a b and c and it's a connected graph and i'm putting the edge weights something like this all right so in this case this is the initial graph without increasing the edge weights and in this case the first statement p statement says that mst of g does not change initially in this case of the graph mst would be the minimum spanning tree that means the set of edges that connect all the vertices and that are minimum in weight all right so if i have to connect all the three vertices a b and c th these three vertices would be connected by the edges a b and b c because if i exclude any one of them and include a c then the weight of the spanning tree would be more and it, it won't be a minimum spanning tree all right now let's increase the weight of each edge by a certain amount let's increase it by 100 okay so when i increase by 100 the weight of each edge so the edges or the weights of the edges change to be a b now becomes 101 a c now becomes 200 100 plus 100 is 200 and BC becomes 102. <clears throat> All right. And for this, MST would be the minimum spanning tree would be formed by including all the three vertices again because that is the basic property of a minimum spanning tree. And we have to include those edges that form the minimum sum of the edges. That means if I include, say, AB and AC, the total would be 301. If I include AC and BC, the total would be 302. But if I include AB and AC, the total would be 203, which is again the minimum sum that can be obtained from this graph even after we have increased the edge weights by a particular amount. So statement P that MST of G does not change is true. All right. So uh, since you have found out that the P statement is true, you can eliminate some options if possible. So P only can be an option. Q only cannot be an option because we have found out that the option or the statement P is correct. Neither P nor Q, this is also cannot be the answer because here we know P is correct and P and Q both. So what we are left with is option A and D and you have to move to the second statement and find out if it is correct or not. Now coming to the second statement, the shortest path between any pair of vertices does not change. So let's see if I find out that in the initial graph, the path from A to C, the shortest path is from A to B and then from B to C because the sum of this path is 1 plus 2 equal to 3 in this case. All right, if I have to find a path from A to C. Now, if I increase the edge weights and I again find a path from A to C, I find that if I go from A to B and B to C as I did previously, the sum of the path length or the edge lengths, the sum of these edge lengths would be 203. But if I directly go from A to C using the edge AC, the path length would be only 200, which is less than 
the path that I would have followed if I would have used AB and BC. That means if I increase the edge weights by a certain amount, the shortest path between any two vertices may or may not change. But since in this case it is changing, therefore statement Q is incorrect and thus the option that is correct would be A. P only. The only statement that is true is P. See, I'll explain this to you again. Initially in the uh, graph, the shortest path from A to C was comprising of the edges AB and AC. But when we increase the weights, the shortest path was now the direct edge AC. So that is why Q is incorrect. Okay. Coming to the second question. The second question says, let G equal to V comma E be an undirected simple graph in which each edge, each edge has a distinct weight and E is a particular edge of G. Which of the following statements about the minimum spanning tree of G is or are true? So the first statement is, if E is the lightest edge of some cycle in G, then every MST of G includes E. Okay, so as we did in the previous question, we'll again take up a simple example here. Let's draw a simple undirected but weighted graph having a cycle. Then only we'll be able to see if the statement, the first and the second statement hold true or not. All right, so let's name the vertices and let's a number or let's give the weight assign weights to these edges one two three four and five okay now this is a simple graph and we have to tell if e is the lightest edge in this case i have assumed e to be ad okay if e is the lightest edge of some cycle in g now this is a cycle a b and d is a cycle and e that means ad is the lightest edge of the cycle then the statement states that every minimum spanning tree of G includes E. Is it true? I don't think so. Because here if we find out the minimum spanning tree, the minimum spanning tree would definitely comprise of all the vertices and the edges that would be included so that the weight of the sum of the weights of all the edges is minimum can be 1, 2 and 4. Because if we include the edge AD in any minimum spanning tree, the weight would increase. See, if I choose AD, the sum here is 4, 5, 6, 7. Alright, if I choose AD and then connect it with A to C and then connect A to B as well. So the weight would be 4 plus 3, 7 plus 1, 8. Okay, even if I choose the other way round using edge AD and I choose options like I connect D to B and I connect D to C including all the vertices, the weight would again exceed the weight that we have achieved here because in this case 5 plus 3 plus 2 is uh, 10. Alright, and this weight is 8. So, this both these cases are greater than the 7 sum that we have obtained. Alright, so uh, is statement 1 true? No, this statement is not true because definitely even if the uh, edge is the lightest weight edge in a cycle, it is not necessary that that edge would be included in the minimum spanning tree. All right. Now coming to the second statement, if E is the heaviest edge of some cycle in G, then every MST of G excludes E. Definitely. See, in this case, E, the edge AD that we considered to be E is the heaviest weight edge in this cycle. In the second cycle, that is ACD. All right. And do have we included this edge in the minimum spanning tree? No, because this is a simple concept or the basics of minimum spanning tree that if there is a cycle or there are certain edges and 
the we can replace the heaviest edge with another edge that is present in the set of unincluded edges then we always choose the minimum weight edge so obviously if we have to include the vertices in this cycle that correspond or that comprise of the cycle and we have a heaviest weight edge we would ex exclude that heaviest weight edge because we have to form the minimum sum of the edges to form the minimum spanning tree so option 2 okay statement 2 is correct and the option that is correct that is b okay so lightest edge of some cycle does not mean that it will always be included in an mst but if an, if an edge is an heaviest is heaviest edge of some cycle it will always be excluded all right question says the given diagram shows the flow chart for a recursive function a of n assume that all statements except recursive calls have order of one time complexity if the worst case time complexity of this function is big o of n raised to power alpha so then the least possible value up to two decimal positions of alpha is and you are then given the flowchart for the recursive function a of n okay now the function is initially there is a start there is a node called start then there is a recursive call to a of n by 2 that means if initially the parameter was n or the size of the problem was n then there is a recursive call to the same problem with size n by 2 and then there is a decision node based on this decision node if suppose it is true and this is false if true is the answer for this decision node then we'll again execute one recursive call and then return so the case exists here that means in this case when we the decision node answer is true or the decision comes out to be true then the path would be followed like start a of n by 2 a of n by 2 and then return but please remember that you have to find out the worst case time complexity and worst case time complexity if you can understand from this flow chart it would occur worst case time would occur when there are maximum number of nodes that are traversed here or the maximum number of time is take maximum amount of time is taken or you can say the length of the path that is traversed in this flow chart is the maximum and that would result in the worst case time and therefore analyzing that worst case scenario the path that is followed the calls that are made we would get the worst case time complexity so this was a path of length if we count the number of nodes start node then this node then this node and then return so four nodes now let's see if the decision was false what would happen there would have been another recursive call followed by a second recursive call and a decision suppose this was true this was false if the result of decision was false here we would return so this was a path of length 4 1 2 3 4 okay now if i'm counting the nodes as the length of the path in this case when the second decision results to be false the length of the path would be 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so this path length is 5 now let's assume that the decision resulted in true so what would be done further another call would be made to the function a and then there is another decision so if this decision res results the third decision this was the first decision node the second decision node and the third decision node if the third decision node results into false it would return here so what is the length of the path followed we started with start so one two 3, 4, then 5, then 6. Okay, so this path length is 6. So this is greater than the previous path. Now what case or what would be the path length if we follow the remaining uh, execution path of the decision node? The path length would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So this is the longest path. 
and analyzing this path we would get the worst case time complexity so how many times the recursive calls are being made in this longest path one then two then three then this is the fourth one fifth one so basically if i have to write the recursive function for a of n i would be writing it as 5 of a n by 2 because the problem or the recursive call is for half the size of the initial problem plus big O of 1. Why big O of 1? Because we are told that all the remaining statements except the recursive call take constant time. Constant time for remaining operations except the recursive call. All right. So this is our recurrence that would result in case when the longest path is executed or the worst case is executed. All right. Now, if we solve this, we would get the time complexity as something like big O of n raised to power alpha and we have to find the value of alpha to correct to two decimal positions. So solving this uh, um, recurrence using master theorem, what would be the values of a, b and f of n? Solving by master theorem. So here a is 5, the value of b is 2, this is b, this is a and fn, f of n is order of 1, okay. Or you can also say it to be n raised to power 0. Now let's find out the value of n raised to power log of a given base b. So this would come out to be n raised to the power log 5 base 2 all right so the value log of 5 base 2 would approximately come out to be 2.321 something okay so we can approximate this value that of log of 5 base 2 approximates to 2.32 because we are given that this is we have to find out the value till two decimal places and since this is the first case of master theorem case one of master theorem because here we know that f of n is n raised to power zero which comes out to be a constant of one and here the value that we have calculated for n to the power log of a base b is of this value would come out to be n raised to power 2.32 okay so what would be the time complexity in this case time complexity would be n raised to power 2.32 okay as per the master theorem so you need to be very clear about all the cases of master theorem and you need to check in whether master theorem is correctly applicable in this problem it was applicable here and then you need to find out what is the appropriate time complexity according to the different cases that are told in the master theorem. So that is our answer for the time complexity and here since we only have to tell the value of alpha this is equal to we can write this as n raised to power alpha where alpha is 2.32. Okay if you are asked to find the value till only one decimal position you can write 2.3 also okay so you need to keep in mind what is being asked and to what precision the answer is b is required all right so that's all for today's lecture this was an easy question requiring master theorem application so the concept of master theorem is definitely very important because it is a quicker way of solving recurrences than substitution method or uh, any other ways that you use all right so thank you for watching this video stay tuned to easy engineering classes for more such tutorials in our preparation series subscribe to our channel press the bell icon to get the notifications of our upcoming video and don't forget to give the feedback of this video in the comment section below because your feedback helps us improve the content Thank you for watching. Good luck for your exam.